All righty, y'all. We are in lesson five, Breaking Weaving Rules. This is the Epically Creative Weaving course, and I am Amy D. McKnight. In this lesson, you'll learn how to use intentional skips, how to weave multiple picks in one shed, how to use purposeful draw-in, and how to purposefully put excessive wefts in a pick. Say that five times fast. All right. I want to talk to you about how breaking the rules can free you up to be a better weaver. Okay, here are some ways that it does this. It makes making mistakes seem less monumental. It will set you up to understand how more advanced techniques work and it allows you the freedom to create in the moment. So we're going to kick this off by starting with intentional skips. So we all have done it. We have skipped a thread or two, and there are loads and loads of videos showing you how to fix it. These are, the, that is unintentional skips, and they occur when a thread is missed or caught when passing the shuttle through the shed. In traditional rigid shuttle weaving, they are a problem to be fixed and can be easily fixed off the loom with a needle and matching thread. They can be a severe cause of consternation with many weavers ripping out or weaving backwards to fix the problem intentional skips they happen when the shuttle is brought up and out of the shed to go over the warp threads and then return to the shed you can make the skips as long or as short as you'd like keep in mind that for clothing um, and things that you want to use more a lot you want to keep those little jogs, little skips short so that they're less likely to get snagged. But hey, if you want to throw caution to the wind and just go for it, feel free. Intentional skips. You can find a video over my shoulder of me weaving these after this video, and it will be labeled intentional skips. Next up, we have multiple picks before changing sheds. Now, Putting multiple picks into a shot before changing sheds is a simple way to add visual interest by adjusting the height of the row and the weave balance. The more picks you put, the bolder the line will be. I generally like to do about three or so. You can do as many as you like. I like odd numbers. To keep from unweaving your row as you add additional picks before changing sheds, just be sure to go around the edges on each pass. So let's go through how to put multiple picks in a shed. You're gonna open the shed. You're gonna weave a shot. You're going to beat. You're gonna open, reopen the same shed. You're gonna bring your shuttle around the edge warp thread so that the weft is secured on the edge. You're gonna weave a shot in the other direction. And you're gonna beat. You're gonna open the same shed. You're gonna bring your shuttle around that edge so that the weft is secured on the edge. You're gonna weave a shot, which I'll think I'm gonna click next, and you're gonna continue until the desired number of picks are achieved in that particular shed. Yeah, and then you're gonna beat and change sheds. Now, if you wanna see this in action, you wanna check out the video, the multiple picks before changing sheds video that will be labeled after this lesson. Purposeful draw in. That's what's happening over here and over here. Draw in. Draw in is when the edges of the fabric are pulled too tight and begin to concave. This concave happens because there is not enough weft threads in the pick to interlace over the warp threads in a balanced way properly. It is a fact of weaving that we're generally trying our best to fight against. There are methods and tools that one can get to make that fight more winnable. Using a weaver's angle and being careful not to pull the edges also helps. Huh. Now, this is one of those techniques that you may consider using to shape a bag or the top of a skirt or as a design element in a scarf. Or you might just want to do it because you can and, you know, say that you did it on purpose and mean it, you know. The only people that are actually going to notice the draw in are generally speaking super persnickety people and other we weavers and yeah don't worry about them so sometimes just put it there and then you can say that you did it on purpose this is also helpful it allows you to be okay with the fact that it happens 
It doesn't make your cloth unusable. It just makes it relatable as an object made by a human and not some industrial machine. So how do you create purposeful draw-in? I think we all kind of know how to do this, but I'm going to tell you how to do it just in case you're not sure how it's happening. You're going to weave a shot. Then you're going to gently pull the weft or make the angle much less than 45 degrees or 30. You're going to beat. You're going to repeat that. The fabric will begin to draw in at the edges. To fix this, simply begin weaving. You know, you want to be careful to use the appropriate weaver's angle. And after a few rows, your edges will straighten up. So if you find that you have a problem with doing this unintentionally, maybe intentionally do it and see what's happening. And then, you know, have some fabric that's kind of doing like a wave up the side. That could be cool. But it also is a way to give yourself permission and also to be able to learn how to fix it. You'll find an over my shoulder video of me weaving purposeful draw in after this lesson. Excessive wefts in a pick. Now this is the opposite of purposeful draw in. Instead of having two little wefts in each pick, we will put way, way too much wefts in each pick by using exaggerated angles. This will produce a wavy fabric on the loom and wider than standard material when taken off. It will also create random bobbles and puffs of threads for a very highly textured cloth. So how do we do this? We're going to open a shed. We're going to throw a shot or a pick across. We're going to unwind some thread from the shuttle. We're going to lay the shuttle on the cloth. While this thread is still open, we're going to create W's, the letter W's or M's with the thread. The more exaggerated their peaks, the more textured your cloth is going to be. Then we're going to close the shed and we're going to beat. You may want to do this slowly at first to find the precise angle that your shuttle needs to be to get the texture as opposed to just multiple areas of picks. We just learned how to do that. So unless you're going for that, you want to just kind of practice this one. This one, you got to get a sort of rhythm for it. And for fabric that is consistently textured, you want to make sure that the peaks and valleys are about the same for each pick. See, see, you see what I'm doing there? Okay, so hopefully you can visually get what I'm trying to tell you to do. But if not, just go watch the video, Excessive Wefts in the Pick. And I'll show you this pretty cool technique for making super textured and super stretchy fabric. All right, so in this lesson, you learn how to use intentional skips, how to weave multiple picks in one shed, how to use purposeful draw ins, and how to purposely put excessive wefts in picks. Take action now. Pick a technique or two to try out, weave with or after the example vid videos. And then if you haven't already, go ahead and just download the game board. Fill it out as you go. Hashtag creative weaving up playing if you want to follow other people and share what you're doing on the social web. And I want to invite you as always to join my community. It's always Weaving is so much fun with others, especially when you're weaving with others of like-mindedness. These creative techniques that I've been sharing, there are things you can take or leave with rigid heddle weaving, and there are other general rigid heddle groups out there. But this rigid heddle group that is my weaving community is for those of us who want to have fun, who are creative, out-the-box out the weavers, or those striving to be such. So again, I invite you to join. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Please comment on this video, subscribe if you haven't already, ring that notification bell, and share the video. In the next lesson, you're going to learn where to find further information in popular weaving books and what is coming up in our third, third module, module three. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.